And from this comment on one of my last videos from Stefan, he explained exactly how the compression works. So what he basically explained there, if we have an M6 screw and we tighten this one with 10 Newton meters, we will get 1000 kilogram force. If we tighten this with 3 Newton meters, we have a force of 300 kilogram. And this is exactly what we want for our batteries. But if we use six screws of M6, each of them only needs 0.5 Newton meters to achieve these 300 kilogram force. Half a Newton meter. There we go, 0.5. Oh, that is, <laughs> that is not very tight. There we go, half a newton meter. Now you can't turn them with your hand anymore. So this is now 300 kilogram force apparently. Wow. Guys and welcome back to another video here from the off garage in super sunny. Oh, it's actually a bit cloudy this afternoon. All right, it is still sunny hot Australia here. I have fully charged the battery to 28%. We're still having 24 amps outside. Yeah, around 30%, this is all I'm getting. Gives me around 18 to 20 kilowatt hours per day. And this is just enough for the hot water, the pool, the house, and sometimes some vehicle charging as well. Anyway, guys, we, in this episode, we want to have another look at the Global Power Do-It-Yourself battery box. They have been in contact with me, of course, and explained a lot how the design works, where the cables go, how to mount these big cables going from the circuit breaker and the BMS to the battery. And I want to try my best to finish this battery today. They also admit that there is still no manual and they have forgotten to send these bus bars. These bus bars were not included. They are supposed to have this M3 thread to connect the balance cables, but they are not here. I only have these six, two short ones, one large one. That's it. It doesn't really matter because I just cut off these M3 cable lugs from the balance cables and we will add some 6mm cable lugs. And here the front panel you have seen before. I've mounted the terminals, the circuit breaker and the communication board, the power button there. But from the back it looks actually a bit different. And there we go. So apparently this is their design, their cabling design. They're going with this cable here in a right angle backwards away from the front panel and here in a sharp bend to the positive terminal. And the incoming positive which comes from the battery main positive goes to the front first and then in a sharp bend backwards back to the circuit breaker. And this is how it connects to the battery then. And I had this one the other way around and couldn't make it work. It is still not a great design because we have a very sharp bend of this cable here right after the ring lug ends. And I personally would not do such a design here at all. That puts a lot of force on this cable, especially there where it comes out of the ring lug. So I am not a fan of this design. But this is how it's supposed to work. So we go with that and see if we can finish the battery box today. Yeah, and you really have to mount these two cables top and bottom first because you have to tighten this Allen key screw underneath here. And this is only possible from the front. This is the correct order. Otherwise, well, you can't reach it anymore. Yeah, and then we have mounted our compression plate here with 0.5 Newton meters each of the screws, which makes in some 3 Newton meters, which gives us apparently the 300 kilogram force which is recommended by the manufacturer of these batteries, EVE, EVE, whatever you want to call it. So I'm sure this intro sequence will cause some discussions and people say 0.5 newton meters will not be enough to achieve this 300 kilogram of force. But it seems like Stefan is some kind of a mechanical engineer or something. I link this video down below as well if you want to read the original post. Of course, with this front panel design here, we don't have an even spread of the force. We will have more force on the side than in the middle here. There is this middle support rail missing. Otherwise, we would have three more screws here in the middle holding this compression plate in place. And we would need to apply even a lower torque to these nine screws. Because the sum of all the screws we are using makes the force we are pushing these batteries in. Or as Stefan has explained it, it is actually the third law of motion by Newton. 
So the batteries are actually pushing against the compression plate now with exactly the same force. That's very interesting. I'm keen to read your comments about this. <laughs> So exactly after finishing and uploading the previous video about this Google Power do-it-yourself box, they got in contact with me and provided all the information I needed. We sent heaps of pictures back and forward. I tell you, there was a lot of texting involved. But because there's still no official manual for this battery box, there was no point for me to find out how this all works together. But now I think I've got all the information together. Let me show you what I've got. So with a BMS plate, I have put this screw in here and the other one on this side. And the top holes are still not lining up. I can push this over a bit so this hole will line up, but this one here is still out of spec. Yeah, but this one is not going in, so I probably have to force it in with a battery drill. Destroying the screw or the thread in the battery case. Okay, I think it just fit. Maybe the whole box is not really square or something. I don't know what's not lining up here, but it is in now. As good as it gets. And I've also seen in one of the pictures, this is what the rubber protectors or covers are for. They're coming on here. Which I really like because the, because the overall epoxy sheet leaves the positive and the negative free of your battery. And this one actually covers it against the top lid. So this is a good solution actually. And you can pull this one back, tighten the nut, connect the other side. So this is pretty good. Ah, see? Slowly we are turning all the negative stuff into the positive. So, and before we mount the front panel, we have to tighten and torque these two screws here for the terminal of the BMS. I don't know if JK has ever released a torque setting for their terminals. So, I just tighten them. I think it's okay. And the bottom ones are still loose because I want to connect the front panel negative terminal first and then see in which... No, I think I can just... Because it will be in this location here. I'll just tighten them right now as they are in this position. And the rest is flexibility of the cable. Should be fine. Okay, that is tight. I don't think we really need a torque setting for these. They are bumping fast as they are. So, and we can now finally mount the front panel. So connect the P negative of the BMS to the negative terminal of the front panel. Tighten this as well. And now we can finally install the front panel. That looks all super tight. Uh, come on. Yes, it fits. So positive here. Okay, just two screws in the front for the moment, so you can see if it actually fits. You can put this cover over the terminal. So, there we go. And then later on we can pull this one over the whole terminal. It covers it up perfectly. That's good. I like this. Okay, I think this basically concludes the mounting of the front panel, all the components, the BMS. Do we still have, holy shit, still have access to the communication cables which are there at the bottom of the BMS? I think we can just, just reach them. I should have, maybe I take off the front panel again. I've forgotten about these cables. I tried to get them in without disassembling the front panel again, but you really should connect them before you mount the front panel. It's a bit hard to get to. Negative bus bar, everything is tightened. Positive bus bar, yep. Circuit breaker, main positive, main negative. Cool! Oh, we are slowly getting there. The only thing we cannot do at all is mounting these rails here. Because, well, as you have seen in the previous video, these holes are not lining up. Now you can see the holes are not lining up at all. No chance. So we will install this battery box without these rails. And without these ones as well. So, um, 
versus this um, here. So obviously with these double terminals and no middle rail, we cannot use this flexible bus bar here, which was used in the eel battery to connect these two rows together. Far too long. I could potentially re-drill it, but I'm not sure if I can drill this flexible bus bar. It's several layers of copper and I think this will all get messy. So we replace this one here with another bus bar. Solution would be to use one of Maddie's flexible bus bars. No problem at all. We can just put them over here and it will connect these two rows. And the last two screws, main negative. There we go, four Newton meters all around. So before I start organizing these cables here, uh, I want to plug them in so I've got the correct length they need to have to reach all the terminals. So I have now adapted and modified the balance cables. I have taken off the three millimeter ring lug and crimped a six millimeter ring lug on. We've mounted all the double bus bars onto the double terminals of these battery cells here. This is not something Google Power supplies. So if you have batteries with double terminals, you need to provide your own bus bars. And then finally connect all the balance cables to the individual terminals of each cell and also measure the voltage of each individual balance cable. I'm getting several emails each month where people have destroyed their BMS because they haven't checked the consistency of their voltages. So definitely do that. I definitely, definitely recommend to install and connect all the cables to your communication board before you mount the front panel. I've just measured it, but it took me about 15, probably 20 minutes to get them all in, all four. Got the gray one, the two red ones, and the very tiny one for the power button. And they're all sitting directly down there behind the breaker. So, so there's a gap of one finger. Oh, it's all good. They're all in, connected, ready to go. <laughs> Hopefully it works, so <laughs> shit. Even, even that is so tight. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay. That is in. Number two, number three, and number four. Okay, and then we need to connect the main positive of the battery with the positive cable going to the BMS. There we go. All right, we should be able to turn on the BMS now. We've got a red light. We've got the LEDs on the communication board. Alarm flashing, this means we have to change the password on the BMS when we log in. And that's basically it. Uh, I think I made a bit of a mistake here. I've used now this um, spiral wrap. Can you say this quickly three times? <laughs> spiral wrap. Yeah, that's what I've used, but I haven't got the right size. So this one is actually a bit small for these many cables inside. I have started with the split loom, but this was not the correct size either. So I need to get a 13 millimeter split loom and this will work perfectly because now I have extracted all the temperature sensors, but they are far too long. So actually they need to go into, into the spir spiral wrap as well. Just so I keep the sensor here and I pull the cable in the spiral wrap all the way up here. And I glue this one here on top of the battery or something. But I've now forgotten to integrate this cable and there's no way to put them in anymore. So I usually don't use spiral wrap at all here. I don't like it. It's, it's just a, such a final solution. I could have used Velcro. That's right. Well, in the next box, we use Velcro. Okay, but for now, all the cables are organized. I'll take care of the temperature sensors later. Got everything connected. Okay, turn this one on if it still works. All right, let's, uh, let's have a very quick look at the app oh yeah here it is the pb2a whatever it says there click to view alarm yeah that's the password and the um battery is fully charged nah this one is on 15 20 percent or something input password one two three four five six verify this is a 304 amp per hour and we have to set oh we need to click on lithium ion phosphate this is what they have changed right they are starting with um, LTO batteries and that's why it thinks it is fully charged. So lithium ion phosphate, then it changes everything again. Yeah, we have to set everything up again and just check 
if this is all good. What version are we running on these systems? Ooh, that is actually hardware 15. This is my first hardware 15 I have. That is great. I was actually wondering if we can run version 15 and version 14 together. So we will do some testing in regards to that as well. And I have to upgrade this to the 15.17 uh, or whatever is current now. But this all looks good so far. All the cell voltages here, they are all right. 3.3 volts. It says 70 percent. Hmm, I thought I have discharged this battery, but maybe it is actually at 60 or 70 percent state of charge. Well, it doesn't matter. As long as it works, that is all good. Ah, uh, I have to realign the front panel here a bit. I have to take off all the screws again. That's fine. Done and dusted. My God, what a do-it-yourself box. There was more do-it-yourself than actually box. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think Google Power has to do some homework here and improve this box a little bit. I would really like to see some flexible bus bars here instead of these huge and bulky cables. The 250 amp breaker and main switch is nice. I like these terminals with the swivel cover and they need to do something with the rails carrying the balance cables. I don't think we can compress these batteries as much as it needs. So these rails actually fit these holes. And if you use these boxes with used battery cells, which are already a bit bloated, you've got no chance to compress them in. And of course, in a future upgrade, I want to see a display here in this space. There is lots of space behind the front panel. Look at this. Lots of space. Nothing happening there. So there's, so we can easily put the large 4.3 inch or the 3.2 inch or even the small display in here. Just the display in the front would be nice. Press a button, have a quick look at the voltage and amps state of charge. So you don't need to pull out your mobile phone and connect with the app first. I know these are additional costs, but it could be an optional upgrade when you buy the battery. Yeah, apart from that, everything has worked out now. Um, if you know how to build this battery, it is possible. It is not the best design I've seen. So the Zeplos Mason 280 is still the king of do-it-yourself battery boxes. Especially the Zeplos one-page instructions to build this whole battery, which is possible, which is fantastic. And the battery layout scheme on the back. This is what I want to see. One page gives you all the information you need. Perfect. So yeah, I probably would give the um, Google Power do-it-yourself battery kit at the moment uh, two out of five rocks now after we have installed it. So at least you can build the battery now, but it is a lot of do-it-yourself work. You also need to recrimp all the balance cables from the JK BMS because they're coming with a three mil cable. But maybe you are getting the bus bars with the um, three millimeter thread in the middle and you can use the ring lugs as they are. Who knows? And here as well, I'm sure we will see an upgraded version of this battery box in the future. Gobel Power is usually pretty responsive when it comes to upgrades. So let's see what will happen in the future and what ideas and improvements Gobel Power will bring to the table. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here for all these beautiful people who are donating to the channel and everyone who is leaving comments and likes, as well as welcome to all the new subscribers of the channel. Thank you very much. This all makes these videos possible. Until the next video guys, when we do something completely different maybe, or maybe I build the other box, I don't know yet. In any way, until then, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then, bye bye.